everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Coffee and Cannoli podcast. The gang's all here once again, can only mean one thing, another wrestling episode. So this time, it's our favorite wrestling announce teams. Not solo announcer, not favorite announcer, yeah, but funny. announce pairings. Pa- Putty, you're going to get it right this time, right? No, I, I got it. Yeah, I've got okay, it right this time. Okay, yeah. good. Um, this time, not the last time. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Continue on. I, I, we don't know what's going on. Um, so... We're going to go through our top favorite uh, announced teams. Doesn't matter what promotion, doesn't matter what era, doesn't matter who they are. You could have multiple announcers on your list paired with somebody else. So on that note, I am going to start with Putty. You're going to go first. All right. So my number five will be Jim Ross and Paul Heyman. That's a a really good choice. Paul Heyman was... uh, overlooked during that era after yeah, Jerry Lawler he was, left. But he, he was good and everything, but I mean, you know, again, we'll, we'll get into the later. Like, that's 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 my number yeah. Five. yeah, exactly. All right. Caps, you're number five. This is my only Caps of the list. I, I want to try to get like as many people in here as possible because they were so good at what they did. Um, so uh, Joey Styles and Joel Gerner. Uh, mm-hmm. Joey Styles is so freaking entertaining back in the day. Oh my God. Um, and the Shivani Heenan Tane uh, team of WCW. Yeah. Very good choice. <clears throat> to me, Campo, yeah. Uh, my number five is Heyman and Ross as well. Uh, my number five is capped as well. Um, I'm going with the team, uh, like Cap said, of uh, Shivani Heenan and uh, Mike Tane. And I'm also going to cap it with a more recent team in NXT. We had Moro Ronaldo and Nigel McGuinness. They were a really good team in NXT. Putty, Putty. your number four. It, my number four would be Michael Cole and JBL. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Caps, your number four? My number four is Ventura McMahon. Campo. Uh, my number four is, uh, I'm not going to call it the Caps, um, but it's Shivani, Tene, Zabisco, Heenan. Zabisco, Heenan, because they kind of interchange. And I, I was mm-hmm. fully okay with either one of them being there with Shivani and Tene. Just no Mongo McMichael in that list. No Mongo McMichael allowed. <laughs> Zero. Is he still alive? <clears throat> uh, my number four is uh, the team of Joey Styles and Joel Gertner. Okay, my yep, number buddy. three. Yep, my number three. Continue with another. The last person on the last the number four would be Michael Cole and Taz. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. The top three are friggin' hard, uh, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to cap them. So, uh, number three, Ross Lawler. Campo. Number three. Yeah. Uh, number okay. So number three, I have uh, McMahon, Heenan, <clears throat> Macho Man. For whatever a period of time that was, but it yeah, it's so charismatic, and uh, I it's just memory. Slim Jim overload. Yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. Well, the, the, the Savage in my eyes was actually the yeah. reason why I like that, but not enough. Yeah, my question. Yeah. Uh, my number three is McMahon Ventura. Okay, buddy. My number two is Bobby the Brain Heenan and Tony Schiavone. I I did kind of forget to add, but yeah, you know, Mike Tenay's part of that. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, yeah, yeah, but I was thinking about them. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. That's you know, fair. Yeah. Uh, my number two are the first two voices I heard when I watched wrestling, and that is Ventura Monsoon. Uh, okay, so my number two is once again the similar to the last one. Do you, if you want to call it a caps, uh, it is. Uh, s- First things I remember wrestling, uh, I got Monsoon, Heenan, or Ventura. You, uh, Monsoon is the, the catalyst there with yeah. that, the other two. Uh, my number two is uh, Ross and Lawler. Well, your number two is my number one, Ross and Lawler. My number one is Heenan and Monsoon. My number one is Ross and Lawler. My number one is Heenan Monsoon as well. Uh, so uh, my number two was your guys' one. Your guys' one was our yeah. one, too. So that's pretty good. But, I yeah. Mean, yeah. The, I mean, Ross and Lawler, that's iconic. Like, I mean, they got us through, like... Yeah, it's too early. Yeah, it got us through the... But, I mean, they were the catalyst 
Oh, they so were like, like it, probably the longest running of any of these. Yeah. It would have run longer if uh, Jerry Lawler didn't quote unquote quit the company at the time too. And that's what brought you into the Ross and Heyman era. Now I, 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 have a, I have a question. I, when I make these lists and everything, there's one thing I've always noticed and maybe it's because I don't go back to wrestling. I basically watch something and then I never really went back and rewatch this stuff. But I know that Monsoon and Ventura and all that were around my time, even with 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 uh, with a uh, um, uh, you know Bobby Heenan. But I just don't remember it that vividly to really put it on my list. And I saw it on a lot of lists, and it wasn't like I was trying to downfall them in any way. But like the the, the Bobby Brain Brain Heenan I remember was during that WCW era when mm -hmm. you know, and of course you know who was you know who was brought onto the stage during that time. And then, of course, Lawler and Ross, for me, and maybe you feel the same way, Campo, is, was just so iconic. And during that time, there were so many iconic characters that, that you would hear both of them screaming out, you know, like Jim Ross, just in general, when he's talking about the Stone Cold Star, like just the little things that they would, it, it was so memorable to me. So I think it's because at that point, I was already memorizing it so much to understand who they were as characters, if that makes sense. And I, 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 think, that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go on with that. Yeah. What makes them so iconic, I think, in my opinion, is that Lawler was such a scumbag that I made it, it so good. It, it offset Sorry. it so much because no one as heel as they were was as much of a scumbag as Lawler. He was, was. he was a literally he's playing himself, a dirty old man. Yeah, and, and it worked, you know, and it's funny <laughs> because the I know the movies about WCW, but Ready to Rumble King just reminds me of Jerry Law <laughs> Jerry Lawler, yeah. like just right. like a drunken scumbag. Scumbag. And but and Ross is like so pure and like you put them yeah, together and it was like the craziest combo and, and their voices in my head. I mean, I got to give it though. McMahon as an announcer is like one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he, that, that McMahon, he would put everybody knowing, over. And we talked about this before, but prior to knowing what that he was the owner. Uh, it was like you didn't realize that his entire job was just putting over these characters for himself to make money. So to make money, the, yeah. The description of what was happening was so intense, like the Undertaker, and it's like, oh, like he. Really like I mean, I'll, I him. remember McMahon yelling when that's gotta be Kane. That's, that's gotta be Kane. When when he talked about mankind and mankind yeah. being like a a disturbed human being, and it's like yeah. him and Ross, and I mean, I mean, Keenan's <clears throat> great too. Monsoon is in my head always. Yeah. Like but, but but McMahon never would call a move. It would just be, oh, what a maneuver. What a maneuver. Yeah. It was in the game. That's what it said in yeah. the game. But, like, I would say <clears throat> Monsoon McMahon in my head, Lawler yeah. Ross, and then Zabisco, Heenan, and uh, Tony Schiavone. Like, those Tony are Schiavone. my memories yeah. of, like, my most vivid things. But, like, if we're yeah. making a list of, like, I tried to make it between the best and my favorite. Yeah, so, uh, makes like, sense. Yeah. That's... Well, McMahon has a, had a lot of ideas. He was the first person to introduce the first um, heel announcer. Yeah. And, and, and that was Ventura. And, uh, and it's, he was also the guy that told Ventura to just be himself. And, yeah, because before, yeah, before that, it was just, it was commented like it was a sports broadcast. You'd have two sports commentators commentating on, a, on an event. They didn't have that heel face dynamic. I, oh, yeah, I have a question actually. Sure. So I I've obviously gone back and that was our thing. We used to watch old wrestling more than we watched <clears throat> new wrestling. Um, but I don't remember Ventura as a wrestler. What was his whole thing? Like, was oh. he a good wrestler? No. No. He he just, he, uh, he was basically a, a rehash of superstar Billy Graham. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't remember him in anything. Like, I remember him as the announcer more than I remember him as a wrestler. Yeah, Which is really got, funny, too. He was very flamboyant as well. He was a very flamboyant Yeah, he wore the I feather boas. Like, yeah. a, yeah, lot, yeah. A, a lot of Hogan's gimmick came from Jesse Ventura. Oh, for sure. Which came from it. Superstar Billy Graham. Yeah. yeah. And the problem with Ventura is, or it's not really a problem, but the, the uh, disappointing part of Ventura is he would have been huge um, – because a lot of what he did was before WWE got big, and yeah. and his injury was just before WWE got big. Um, but uh, in terms that of that, would have been yeah, that would have been P Ventura and Piper's position. Yeah, and I think he's done interviews where he said that he could still wrestle, but he also said that he was making more money as an announcer than he was as a wrestler. So that's why he just made that yeah. 
huge that, that transition into being and, an announcer. Yeah, and just like Piper too, he left the company because McMahon didn't want him filming Predator or The Running Man or something like that. It was one of those, yeah. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, Ventura, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he because did he that was to in... a lot of people. He tried. He stopped Macho Man from being part of movies. He got mad at Hogan when he did the movies. He got mad at Piper when he did the movies. Like these guys are bringing you revenue by putting their face yeah. in the movie. Like what yeah, right. Hogan ended up bringing Zeus into the company. <laughs> yeah, right. tiny listed. Tiny. You know, it's funny because Putty Man mentioned uh, he doesn't remember um, uh, Ventura Monsoon. If you watch WrestleMania three, that's. Ventura Monsoon. Ventura Monsoon is a great right, dynamic. Right. So, yeah. Monsoon is Monsoon is is iconic. Any yeah. moment where you had Monsoon and McMahon together was my favorite. Yeah, like I mean, but even Monsoon, like going back to our our uh, caps number one, Monsoon and Heenan, they didn't just have that dynamic as a commentator. They would do vignettes together. They would do the primetime talk show together, and like I still hear yeah. it in my head whenever Heenan would say something like arrogant or something monsoon would just say will you stop like it was always yeah, that will you, know you stop they had a really good dynamic too between the two of them it's kind of like where ross and lawler got it from right yeah that's why, it's my number two I, it's not and the like thing is they were best friends in real life too that's yeah, that's what makes friends. it yeah. yeah we're best friends and, so. and ventura and mcmahon had the same thing too and when mcmahon would say something stupid ventura would be like shut up mcmahon i that's no, what i remember it's, like it's yeah. um, you know but you uh, remember the famous saying with Monsoon in uh, WrestleMania 3, eh? Uh, the indestructible force versus the, the immovable, immovable object. object. You know, it's, it's uh, the industrial. Yeah, and yeah, it's you remember, the you, remember Mon- you remember when Monsoon would name body parts? Uh, the, he, he would, that would be, like, oh, he got kicked right into solar plexus or something. <laughs> like, he would, like, say this, like, terminology. The scientific know? term uh, of your no, left deltoid. He's applying plexus? pressure on that left deltoid of. Solar plexus became like a meme in the 90s before memes were even a thing where people would always be talking about solar plexus because the the wrestling, the guys were always like, he hit him in the solar plexus. You're like, what the hell is a solar plexus? Is that even a thing? I think so. It's like your chest area. (laughs) Solar plexus. Um, Yeah, like it was was awesome. And I think they were like flip-flop in in the beginning too, like McMahon, Monsoon, Ventura, uh, Heenan. Nick Mann so, would do like prime time, and then uh, he and, and Monsoon would do like Saturday night main event or something like that. And like, but were Monsoon and McMahon on the early Raw? The first no. little bit of Raw, it was Lawler and McMahon, was see, it? And see, that's what you guys have to understand too. When I was seeing wow. before Raw existed, um, I the way I saw wrestling was Saturday night wrestling. You know what I mean? It would take over Saturday Night Live. I was a big Saturday Night fan. I would watch that, and that got me, you know, pumped up into Hogan and things like that. You know, well, the whole would, thing of Saturday Night's main event was to NBC to air something when Saturday Night Live wasn't exactly, airing. Exactly, exactly. And see, here's the thing. That's what got me got me uh, really, really motivated. And, of course, the cartoons, they had, they had all the cartoon stuff coming out and everything, and, of course, the toys. But there's just a lot to consume. And I think that's the problem that I had is, you know, as I got older, and I know, you know, we have these wrestling conversations, but like the new stuff, I don't end up investing or putting time into. I have a lot of stuff I watch, it, you know, I'm, I'm my channel reviews, everything. So I never really get to go back and look at stuff and reminisce about it. So I feel like that's what hurt me in, the, in this, not respecting those that are great, because they, I didn't see, I didn't remember them as vividly because for me as a kid, I wasn't even paying attention. I'm just looking at the wrestlers going, oh my God, these are massive men that kicking each other's ass. I didn't, I didn't think about who was talking to me in my ear. You know what I mean? Until later on when Raw came out and that's when they started yeah. trickling in the idea. Plus the thing is, now weren't really in the ring. Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler, I remember so many times that they also got involved in stuff too. You know what I mean? Not like a, 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 as much as like, you know, like a man. Well, Lawler was a legit wrestler at that point. No, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So that really brought memories to me. Like Jim Ross, his relationship with Stone Cold Steve Austin was very memorable to me. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? So when he was, you know, all about Stone Cold and he would get in well, the Stone ring Cold says he owes his career to Jim Ross for exactly. putting him over the way he did. And that's the reason why I think that you know stuck stuck in my head because I wasn't thinking about it when I was younger and that really hooked to me to where now I was looking at them more like oh these guys actually have their own background that I wasn't paying attention to if that makes sense so no. you know much respect to 
the monsoon and everything. I know he's a great guy, but I, again, these are our lists, and that's the reason why I did that. So. Yeah, subjective. Yeah. This is yeah, subjective. I, no, um, you're definitely not. Um, so what else? <laughs> I mean, uh, a more a more current. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to hear on AEW Taz and Excalibur. Some of the exchanges they have. I, I like Taz and Excalibur, li- but I I prefer Zabisco and Ross when they're together. Zabisco it's, it's and Zabisco? Ross. Sorry, um, not no. Zabisco. Shivani and Shivani and Ross. Shivani yeah. and Ross and Excalibur. I have them. I yeah, prefer. Them but I like. I I don't mind Taz. Uh, when he's there, but like I, re- I re- they they make botch mention. they make botchamania every time they they're on botchamania yeah. all the time. Yeah. With Taz and Excalibur, like it, some of the exchanges are hilarious. No, like they are. Taz like, just doesn't give a shit. My my first honorable mention was Shivani Ross and Excalibur. I, I think yeah. they're so good together. And then I also have my only other honorable mention I put here was just Joey Styles alone. It doesn't curious. matter who he was with. Oh my god. He he could do it on his own. He, he was he was the voice of ECW. Yeah. Yeah. He did he, was he the needed voice. no partner to, to do that. Yeah. No. Um, I, I noticed Putty, you're the only one that has Michael Cole on his list. I don't I will <laughs> never have any Cole or nope or JBL or the other you what's know, the other idiot? Like, the coach? I, oh I'm Jonathan Coach. That. I think Michael Cole is okay, and I think with Michael Cole, um like I think he he's actually better than what he seems right now, and the only reason why is because he has McMahon in his ear. Yeah, he's very him. much. He's a very much. I will not go off the script. I will read the script. I will go to like. He's very much. I'm going to toe the company line kind of thing. When when he first came in, uh, I I believe it was the SmackDown on SmackDown. Yeah, where right. The Rock puts the T-shirt over yeah. his face. You and your stupid little goatee and. When he first came in and he was just doing Cole, I was okay with that. Once he started becoming part of everything, then I was like, I don't want this anymore. It's like Coachman. When Coachman first started, you were like, okay, it's whatever. But then once he started being part of the in-ring antics, you're like, this is dumb. And it's always on SmackDown. It's always the SmackDown hosts that are the goofy-ass ones. That's true. That's true. Very true. Like same thing with Teddy Long, wasn't it? Like Teddy yeah. Long did a short stint as announcer too, and he started getting involved Taz too. Taz was the only one that that like played a real. And I I actually like Taz. Like I said, I, I like him yeah. in AEW. Like, I he's think on the, the, reason, the announce table. It's good. I think the reasoning behind that is that back in the day, SmackDown was the second rated show, and they were just trying people out because they wanted the next Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler because. I don't know what it what the deal was between McMahon and Jim Ross. I think uh, McMahon wasn't too much of a fan of his, and uh, he wanted uh, someone just to take over. Yeah, um, so Ross held a lot of power my, backstage. Yeah, he did to the point where yeah. McMahon couldn't um, just fire him. Right, he not just power, but like a lot of respect from the guys in the locker room too. A lot so, of the best moments of the Attitude Era are because of Jim Ross, yeah. like planning and producing. Mm-hmm. Very, very much so. Very much so. Uh, one name we gotta mention because none of these guys would be around if it was it was uh, Gordon Soley. I don't even yeah. know who that is. Uh, he was like one of the like he was one of the first voices of wrestling. Gordon Soley, uh, you know, architect. Yeah, and a lot of Jim Ross's commentating is based around a lot of Gordon Soley. Like very technical, puts the baby face over, but explains the match and tells a story while. So basically, it enhances the story that the wrestlers are telling in the ring. Gordon Soley would enhance that story by telling another side story. He'd tell you a little bit of information about the guy. He'd name moves properly. He'd name, like, you know what I mean? Telling you, like, uh, like it's just the way he would tell the story. Like, uh, and he could never, he always used to call it, he never, he, it's, he would say a souple, not a suplex. It was a souple. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he, I think he did everything himself, right? I don't yeah, it was all Gordon. That's why he's not an announced. That's why he's not on the list because it was just Gordon Soley on his own. But yeah, yeah, Gordon Soley, like a lot of these guys on this list wouldn't be doing what they're doing if it wasn't for Gordon Soley. Go go listen to some Gordon Soley early I'll NWA. Yeah, <clears throat> he was he was really really good. Um, yeah, but I mean the dynamic. Going back to what you're saying too, Campbell, the dynamic they have now on AEW with just the rotating announcers and they'll throw in the guest announcer every day. Like even Jericho, when he joins the announce team is very entertaining. It's, it's very reminiscent the way they do the, 
um, the commentary and the rotating and everything, it feels a lot like the prime, really good quality WCW when they yeah. were when they when Nitro was popping off before Thunder happened. Yeah, like that first hour was yeah. like Shivani and Zabisco. Yeah. The second hour was with Heenan and Bischoff, yeah. and, and like and it, it was a great announced team, great, and just the rotation and and. Every you brought like a whole new flavor all the time, and then they would just have random guests. People come sit down at the table, and I really like that. It's yeah. it's it's funny you guys say that too, because when I made the list, I've got all these ones that are paired up, but I literally had Eric Bischoff by himself on the list. On my own, Eric on Bischoff was a good announcer. That's my point. I would he was he, wrote, he was you know, so, uh, number two. I had Bonnie, uh, uh, Bobby Heenan and uh, uh, Tony Shimon, but I, around that time, I remember that too. They were rotating them. And I was like, why do I remember Eric Bischoff so well? Because and whenever the NWO, NWO when they NWO, had their own yeah. part of the show, yeah, he would th- comment the NWO mm-hmm. match. But before NWO, before the thing where he admitted that he was the GM of the thing, he mm-hmm. was the announcer. He was at the yeah, announce yeah. table. But he but was also, he, but, and he was also a uh, backstage interviewer too. Yeah, and, and he he was really good at putting people over, like McMahon was. McMahon was on a different level, but Bischoff always had a talent for stuff like that. He was a good talker. Yeah, um, Zabisco is pretty good too. Zabisco is good, yeah. man. What's I'll What's honest, funny is back back then when Zabisco was commentating, he was only like in his early forties, like. And he was already, re- and he w- he already felt like he was old by that Shivani point. Shivani was young at that point. Shivani was like thirty, wasn't he? Yeah, he just came off a stint with I think it was the Atlanta Braves. If you see Shivani now on AEW, he looks young still. Yeah, I don't think he's even fifty yet, is he? I don't know. I, I never looked it up, but I just saw him the other day, and I was like, "Holy crap, he's so young!" Yeah, it's the earring. The earring doesn't suit is him. Is that what it is? It Didn't doesn't. Shivani have a stint as a Starbucks manager. Or a... I heard he worked at a Starbucks for a little while. That I don't know. I have to look uh, it up. He's sixty-four. Just... He oh, really? Retired. Yeah. He. If you see a picture of him now in AEW, he look. He doesn't look that old. He must have a lot of stock looks, in Just for Men. He looks like Jim Ross in the nineties in his pictures now. Mm. And that means he's only what a couple years older than Ross. Then Ross. Yeah. Ross is like sixty-eight. No. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. You know, I'll throw Piper and I'll throw Mr. Perfect on there as well. Like I know they had small stints yeah. as announcers, but well, they were I, pretty entertaining too. Piper Piper commented uh Undertaker's first match. Did he? Holy cow! Look, look at, at those ham hocks. <laughs> That's a legend right there. Yeah, yeah. That was that was uh, yeah, he commented uh I, I noticed McMahon started doing that a lot when he felt wrestlers were kind of past their prime, he'd throw them on the announce desk. Yeah, but well, I, th- I felt like he did it too soon to some of these guys. He like, did it like, to a lot of Savage people. Savage and Piper were still capable of ha- putting on good matches. But yeah. you have to remember this. Until this day, he still does the same thing. He picks yeah. the big monster guys that can't wrestle. He he pushes people away that are good wrestlers because they're older. He, yeah. he hasn't changed at all. Like, I mean, I can understand if uh, if a guy is injured, you want to keep him relevant. You put him on the announce desk. Yeah, that makes sense. Not when you're literally probably the best wrestler wrestling right now, Macho Man, and you're like, no, you can't wrestle. Go sit down. But he's I'm not going to fire you now. because you're bringing in that Slim Jim money. Yeah, yeah he's no eight years old now. He ain't going to change. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But, I mean, it's just like that. that one is the most mind-boggling of all of them. Because, yeah, I, I love Piper, but Piper was nowhere in a class with Macho Man for wrestling. Like, actual, like, in-ring. No. Power. In-ring, yeah. In-ring, actual wrestling, Macho and Man was head and shoulders took, above Piper. You, Macho Man is, like, arguably one of the greatest in-ring workers ever. And yeah. you pulled him out in his prime. You said, no, go sit down. You're too Macho popular. Man had another 15-year like career almost after he left the WWE. And it would have been even better... And longer if it wasn't for all the weird stints in between where he just didn't wrestle. Yeah. I think Piper is a prime example that you don't have to be a good wrestler. No, but as my point is that good mic skills. You sitting Piper the main and you sitting Macho Man to me is two completely different things. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Piper yeah. talking is still Piper talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're both on the uh, as as far as mic skills. Those two are in a class on oh, their own. Absolutely. Like, right? I love me so but, much, oh man. But in ring, though, yeah, you got to give it to Savage. Savage is in ring performance was much, much better. Well, and he was doing his finishing move was a top rope jump. And sometimes yeah. he went really far with that. 
Yeah. Himself, Whereas Piper's dude. finishing move was just a sleeper. Yeah. I mean, Piper's finishing move was just like a couple yeah. punches in the face. Yeah. Or, and then or, put him in the, or, the yeah, poke like, to the eye. Yeah, the poke yeah. to the eye. That was he, a Ric Flair he, he special, old, too. He was an old school wrestler. Yeah. He was an old school yeah. wrestler. All school right. Entertainer. 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 On that note, guys, I think that's all for this episode. Thanks again for joining us. And uh, check out these guys. Their links will be in the bio. With the exception of Caps. Caps, you'll find them on the street espresso bar somewhere. Working out, making that sauce. All right. On that note, guys, thanks again for joining us. And we'll see you all next time. We actually record.